Well, hello, fellow classmates, and welcome to Making It This Far. Um, at Grant, we do what's called the Pacer Test. The students in gym class have to um, figure out how many steps they take per minute over a 10-minute period. Over the summer, our principal wanted us to incorporate more math and science, so one of the things we came up with is using the Pacer Test, and we ended up making it cross-curricular through the whole school. So PE conducts the test. Um, in science, we talk about relationships between density and the PACER test because they're both proportional. Math talks about the law of proportionality. ELA um, helps write up a synopsis about it, and uh, social studies helps out with that too. So the first question is, how can we relate this to the frameworks? So from section three, I said, where you can formulate a question that can be investigated within the scope of the classroom, school, laboratory, and so forth. Um, I did this, uh, as I just described, we do this as a pacer test. The students are asked to predict how many steps they take per minute over a 10 minute period. I also chose the one that said decide what data are to be gathered. Uh, this is done in PE. I also help out in science talking about independent and dependent variables and control groups. From section four, I to took uh, analyzed data systematically, either to look for salient patterns or the test to other data or consistent with the initial hypothesis. So the students were hoping or recognizing that after graphing this, it follows a lot of proportionality. Uh, in science, we make this correlation between direct and indirect relationships. And I also correlated to density because density follows a lot of proportionality. Also from four, I talked about using the spreadsheets, database tables, charts, graphs. Obviously, that's the whole purpose of doing this is to use spreadsheets. So uh, I chose that one too. And from section five, recognizing dimensional quantities and using appropriate units in scientific applications of mathematical formulas and graphs. Uh, like I said before, this is done between math, science, PE, ELA, and a combined unit. Each section talks about its particular part that goes with the test. In science, we talk about the building and interpretation of the graph, how all graphs need to label, they need a title, make sure the units are labeled on the x-axis and y-axis. And then I said, also chose from section five, express relationships and quantities, an appropriate mathematical work uh, of rhythmic forms from scientific modeling investigations. The students should recognize by the time we get to actually graphing this, which we just did, started doing last week, this graph should be proportional. The goal is for the students to recognize this as proportional while they make the set, uh, graphs in the spreadsheet. So like I said, uh, the next question is how successful were you in, in, co in letting them make their own questions? As I said, this is a school initiative to incorporate math into science and ELE into social studies. Over the summer, uh, we got about 25 hours of PD. We met like the second or third week of July, and we hatched out, I think it's hashed, maybe it's hashed out, this plan to use this pacer test to incorporate all of our uh, specific sections. So, uh, and I used some of the questions for that I asked for deeper thinking. One of the things I wanted, wanted them to do, I wanted them to do two things. I wanted them to be able to extrapolate and see over 20 minutes if they continued walking at the same pace which they should because it's proportional and to see how long it would take them to walk home walking at the pace they set in PE class. So we pull out maps and Google Earth and use all that fun stuff to help out with that. Uh, actually, the next question is how challenging was it to videotape and uploading? I've been using this YouTube capture app I found in the App Store. I have an iPhone 6, iPhone 5 and I found it in the App Store. So I think this is pretty easy. I'm actually going to see if I can incorporate this into a, we have a district-wide seventh grade science fair that we do in May, and I want students to videotape and see how that goes. One of the issues that I think I'm going to address next year before doing this unit is to incorporate how to use spreadsheets into the first couple weeks of school. I'm going to probably take a day or two and just give kids, let the kids use the laptops and
play around with spreadsheets and making the charts and stuff. I'm actually going to show you some of the data that we got. It was, it's really funny um, to go from, to try to figure out how to go from bar graphs to line graphs and the struggles they had there. Um, I try to choose a theme for each month for science and the theme for this month is you can't succeed without failing. Uh, we talk about how like Lionel Messi is the best soccer player in the world because he's not afraid to overshoot the goal. We talk about how uh, uh, Yo-Yo Ma is the best uh, cello player because he's not afraid to miss a note here and there. They're not afraid to make mistakes because you can't learn without making mistakes. So um, when we started using the spreadsheets, most of the kids never used them before. So I took, a, like I said, I was going to do it next year, but I did it. I had to do it in the middle of this year. Let them take a day and just play on the spreadsheets and figure out, well, if I put these numbers in, does that work? If I put these numbers in, does that work? And we're quite not, they're not quite there yet, but uh, we're working on that and we'll get there. So here's some of the student work that uh, we did this past week in starting to graph it. This is one group's uh, pacer test. Uh, I ended up changing their names because I can't use their real names. We're struggling right now to figure out how to get each person's individual um, graph on there. We started with the bar graphs. They enjoyed going through all the graphs that we could use. Pie chart, uh, we showed them line graphs, which is what we we're going to end up wanting to do because for the graphs to follow the law of proportionality, they have to start at zero, which we started to do here, but we can't figure out how to get it on um, the individual numbers graphed and each person their own individual line because right now we have like 25 lines we only want six so that's where we're ended up now we'll probably look at that as we get back after christmas break so um it was pretty interesting to see them play around with this they had fun um, they also got frustrated doing it which is also good i think that's good teaching to make sure they're getting frustrated while they do this stuff so we'll address all those issues when we get back after christmas break so I'm just adding this on because it's kind of funny. I just watched the video through and before I edit it and upload it to YouTube, I watch it and I notice myself looking off. Um, I'm at home doing this right now. Uh, I recorded the student data during the week and then I'm at home doing this today, putting it all together because I'm not allowed to show my students because of privacy issues. And I find myself, I think I have a little bit of ADHD and I'm looking all over the place instead of looking at the video. So I, I just wanted to edit it and something I thought um, was kind of interesting and it's kind of hard to keep your fingers out of this too with a my, with a camera right there so that's also something interesting that adds on to some of the issues we have videotaping. Alright, 